Hi, my name is Paul Sharp, and I work at X Digitals here in San Diego. And I'm going to show you today how to deinstall a Xerox 700 series machine, which also includes the C or the J75. Here we have a J75 today. We're going to deinstall it. And we're going to start with the cables connecting all the firing and all the components together. So we walk around here to the back and we'll start here with the Fiery. The Fiery has normal standard computer components but it also has a data cable here which connects it to the machine. We're going to unscrew the thumb screws and remove it here. There's also a photo spectrometer on a J75. This is removed here with a couple of screws. We just Unscrew a little screwdriver. On a 700, they're not going to have that, right? That's correct. The 700 will not have it, but a 770 will. So we unscrew that, and that comes off right here. I'll set that down. We'll walk over here. This is the uh, back side of the printer here. And we will take the thumb screws and remove the data cable, which connected the fiery here. We're also going to take off this uh, crossover cable. This uh, enables a scanning. We have a, uh, a cable right here. This is for the UI. We're going to take this off the card cage. Thumb screws as well. Let that drop. And we have a cable here. This leads up to the scanner. And we're going to remove its thumb screws as well. You'll also want to take it off the back of the scanner. You don't want to leave any cables hooked up. It can cause damage to the cable and the connector during shipping. So we'll just take these off of the printer and lay that up there. The last two cables we need to disconnect here are for the feeder. There's one here. You just depress in here in this connector and that releases it. And there's another one here. There's a depression. You press it down and pull, just like that. And that's off. Over here, you'll notice the same types of connectors. This is the back side of the... The other side of the, the printer, uh, where the power comes in at. We're going to remove the power. We're going to remove the data cable. It has a depression on the other side, which you couldn't see, but it's there the data cable here. And for this purpose, I've actually removed the cover, which normally sits here, to show you where the power cord comes in here into the interface module. And we'll remove its power right here. And a data cable right here, which leads into the finisher, which I'll show you where that leads into in a second. I'm also gonna remove the power to the finisher now. All right. Now we've handled all the uh, connections on the back side. We'll walk back around to the front. And we can disconnect our modules. We can start all the way over here with the feeder. The feeder, we open up the narrow door here adjacent to the printer. And there's a rail with protrusions right here, you can see. And on the rail, you'll notice there's a, a piece of metal with a little hole in it. This is actually a catch, and if you press in on it firmly, it goes in and releases or undocks itself from two pins. Now, with it held in, you simply give the feeder a little nudge, and it comes off of the printer. Now we come over here, and we're going to disconnect the the finisher, we open up the narrow door on the finisher. And way up high, you'll notice underneath the shaft and bearing, you'll notice a, a little protrusion right here, a piece of metal. I have my finger behind it. It's right above this 1B, it's right here. And if there's a screw in here, you may have to remove it. Most of the time there's not. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna pull it toward us. Undocking it with it held out. We're simply going to push it away from the unit and it comes off 
Lastly, we're going to disconnect the interface module. We'll open up its door. And it has a little lever right here. You put your finger behind it. Sometimes there's a screw right here that's holding it in place. You may have to remove that. We will pull on that. And it comes away. That'll undock everything that you need to undock so that you can now take off the uh, brackets or whatever else is necessary and wrap everything up, cabling, and put it all away. So you need the brackets on these to hook up these individual pieces? Yes, and these brackets can bend fairly easily, so you'll want to remove the brackets. There's two screws for this bracket. There's four screws for this bracket. Located one, two, three, and four. That will remove this bracket. And there's a, another bracket here on the other side for the finisher. It also has one, two screws. Lastly, for shipping, if you're going to be moving this printer, you'll want to remove this conveyor. It normally just sits on here on three hooks, but you'll have to take off what looks like a, a standard data cable. It has a, a clip on it right underneath here. I'll show you. I'll depress on it and I'll remove it. But it's located right underneath here. And you press down on here, you remove the data cable. This is also held on by three hooks, so I'll put it back on and show you. One, two, three, and you simply lift and remove. And the conveyor comes off. It's made out of plastic, so you won't want to leave that hooked up when you move the machine. That's about it. And then to, re to reinstall the machine. To reinstall it, you do everything that I showed you in reverse order. <laughs> uh, you'll want to make sure that you've hooked everything up. Um, uh, just as I, I, I took it all apart. Lining everything up and adjusting each piece. All the wheels are adjustable on, on everything but the printer. So you want to adjust the wheels and make sure everything mates and that everything is level when you put everything back together. Same thing over here, level. And the holes are adjusted with the pins on the brackets so that uh, everything mates up. You don't want to force anything. Thanks for watching. That's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, this is Paul with X Digital.